Joining me now for a closer look at what's playing itself out in that market scene is Jacobus Brink from the Schmidt family office. Jacobus, a pleasure. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Brent Jacobus, I will tell you there is a lot going on uh, today, <laughs> quite Indeed. a bit. Uh, maybe <laughs> we should start off by looking at the general picture on the JSC and even what we're seeing in Europe there, uh, more red uh, than green on both forces. Yeah, I know. As you mentioned, no, there's there's a lot going on at the moment. We've got quite some interesting data coming out of the U.S. this afternoon in the form of the GDP numbers, and you know, as always, the weekly focus on the on the jobless numbers, and then we have the the PCE numbers, the personal um, consumption expend consumer expenditure from um, out of the U.S. tomorrow as well. That's obviously the Fed's preferred gauge of it, of inflation. But yeah, I think you know, overnight the big news uh, was probably that big drop in in Meta. That's sort of setting the tone for the day. We're seeing red sort of across the board. Um, you know, Meta, the results obviously beating expectations, but, you know, I think the big thing of the markets is actually focusing on there's the, the sequential quarter over quarter um, a drop in net income of about 12%. Now, if you look at the last, you know, 12, 12 to 18 months, you know, the share price in most of these tech companies have sort of been following that quarter over quarter sequential growth. Um, and we, we saw that uptick in income, you know, with the, the likes of Meta in particular as well. But a lot of that's been coming off cost cutting you know now we're starting to to move into a normalized environment where okay they've done all the cost cutting obviously they've, they did a lot of um, retrenchments last year and you know the outlook isn't now necessarily looking great and I think the market's pretty much reflecting that um, we also saw, saw some bad numbers out of Boeing Boeing's obviously been struggling and I think you know just the sort of the general um, sentiment in the market currently is you know having priced in all of these rate cuts which have now been completely, completely priced out I think you know if you look at the market currently sort of expecting the Fed to possibly only start cutting in September or possibly November. Um, we haven't really seen that reflected in the, in, the, in the share price, you know. So a lot of these big tech stocks especially have been priced for, for perfection. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be an interesting few weeks as we see those earnings coming out. I must also ask you about, uh, you know, the, the story of the Magnificent Seven during this time, Jacobus. We've had stories about correction uh, in some of those stocks, and now we're speaking about these earnings that are <coughs> revealing a picture uh, that is less attractive for investors than what initially uh, was thought to be. Will we still be speaking, though, about these seven companies and the value that they bring uh, to the boards? Yeah, you know, I think um, the AI story is definitely something you can't really ignore. Um, Magnificent Seven, um, I think, is also outdated now. We, we moved down to the Fabulous Five or the Fab Four, you know, the three amigos, terrible dudes. I don't know where we're going to end, you know. <laughs> but but it's it's definitely still a story. But as I mentioned, you know, I think those, especially those stocks, were very much priced for perfection. You know, if you look at something like Apple, it's really down on on the year quite substantially. A lot of it, you know, is from the um, the drop in growth in in China that we have seen. Tesla, a similar one. You know, it's down about 40 percent. I think we had a big jump, obviously, yesterday post post their earnings. Um, press conference, but you know, these things, as I mentioned, had, had been priced to perfection. A lot of it was also on the back of, of the Fed supposed pivot um, that we saw in November. And as I mentioned, now that's been completely almost priced out now. I think the market's pricing about a 2% probability of the Fed actually cutting rates in June, which was at one stage priced in for a 100% um, rate cut in June. You know, So I think that's, that's going to drive sentiment quite a lot. Um, and another interesting thing is, you know, the market's starting to trade close to some key tech technical support levels, you know, and I think if we start to drop through those, we could see some further downside. That read along, you know, in, in conjunction with some of the weaker uh, manufacturing data that we saw out of the U.S. earlier in the week, you know, doesn't necessarily paint a great picture, you know. Yes, the market is still expecting, you know, good, good, um, a good number um, on the GDP side, um, but a lot of that's been sort of driven by government spending, and we're not really seeing the U.S. consumer in a great place. So, yeah, a lot going on, a lot to digest. Another big one today, I must tell you, surprised me, but didn't surprise everybody. BHP and uh, in pursuit of Anglos, I'm keen to get your initial reaction to these news. Was it a surprise to you, Jacobus? And then trying to take stock of the nitties, because I think there's quite a bit to peel through to understand what the offer here is. 
Yeah, no, definitely. No, that was an t- interesting one. The market's obviously taking it uh, very well. Um, you know, I think it's up about 15% currently, or last time I looked, it's, it's moving around quite a bit. But, you know, yeah, I think, you know, for, it's, a, it's a win for both parties, you know, Anglo and the BHP shareholders. Um, it's going to give both of them, you know, uh, exposure to a really nice, broad um, spectrum of commodities. Um, and, you know, it, I think the, the premium, that the, or the implied premium on the market value, of the unlisted assets about 31 percent you know so so it looks it looks fairly good it looks like a nice one the market's obviously liking it um, obviously the other thing that we need to to keep in in mind is that it is obviously non-binding and it's still subject to you know all of the customary conditions and everything due diligences but you know Angler has been um, has offered sort of a reciprocal due diligence um, for B, on BHP as well you know so it seems like both of them are sort of in the same camp so yeah a win it seems all around I will ask you also, Jacob, it seems to be here that, uh, you know, many are convinced that this is really BHP's pursuit at copper. It really is a copper play here. But we know Anglos is way more colorful uh, than that. I'm wondering if it really is just a copper story there. Yeah, copper, copper is an interesting one. You know, we saw obviously some some interesting news yesterday from Copper 360 out, um, and and I think you know the, the copper in in our minds, you know, we I think we saw a bit of a, a bottom in the sort of the resources complex in general last year. You know, so copper specifically, along with gold and a, a number of the other PGMs, have staged quite a bit of a recovery over the last six months, um, and a, a lot of the analysts we're looking at have got still a lot of upside. upside out in copper prices. Obviously, that is to a large extent also reliant on China. Um, you know, as they we start to see them, you know, all of the monetary stimulus and everything happening um, in China. So, you know, that could be a massive tailwind for for all of these, especially copper as well. Um, so, I wouldn't be surprised if it is a copper story. And then also just spread it home. Clicks today out with what I think is a rather decent uh, set of numbers here. But I saw their share price is down and disc came is up, uh, which I found to be a little bit confusing. I'm wondering if there's something that markets don't like about this update coming out of Clicks. Yeah, no, interesting one. Um, you know, I think it, it was a great set of numbers. Um, you know, it's uh, they they had been mounting sort of headwinds in in, in the current trading environment, um, and you know, I like the fact that it gained market share across most of its retail, health, and beauty categories. Um, it grew some of their private label products. Margins are looking good. Um, you know, solid, robust cash flows. So, no, a, a good one, I think. You know, I'd, I'd probably buy the buy this dip if if, if I was an investor. <laughs> if you're an investor. <laughs> well, yeah, Gomez, I'm keen to get your stock pick in a bit, but first, I'll back us to reflect on counters that have found favor with your industry peers. It's not been the greatest start to the month, you know, when it comes to offshore markets. Um, we, we had a great start to the quarter, but given that the markets came off, it's given us a bit of opportunity maybe to get into some of our favorite companies, really. I didn't have to scratch my head too much for this one. Uh, one of my favorite companies, and I think generally speaking, your favorite analyst's favorite company is generally ASML. You know, it's, so, yeah, it's one yeah. of them sort of open secrets, I would say, not yeah. so secret at this point, but really they sit at the top of the semiconductor supply chain. I've got an iPhone. What makes it smart is the microchip within the phone. Um, Taiwan Semiconductor is the company that makes that microchip, mm. but they need machines from comp- from ASML hey. to produce those microchips. And it's pretty much that case across the board. ASML is the only company that does this. They came off about five, six percent uh, on the back of a, a weaker than expected order book last week. Uh, I was excited to see that. It gives me a chance to get uh, more yeah. exposure for uh, for clients that don't have any. It's always a great uh, opportunity to get some exposure to what is definitely uh, one of the best companies in the world. I'm going for a company called ASM, not ASML. ASM, who came out with numbers today, and they're just pointing to uh, really a big turnaround still in the semiconductors. So look at it. They were joined at the hip at one stage, so don't get confused. Okay. Both good companies. Tencent looks good. Chinese tech yeah. was just too cheap. Tencent has come up with a new game. The price is really nice. Perhaps and process are really on the back of that. And I think there's more upside to Chinese tech. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we spoke about Chinese tech just being too bombed out. And now we're seeing there is some recovery in Chinese tech. Maybe the government's backing off a little bit. As I also said, they've got a new game out. I mean, I certainly don't play any games or do any gaming, but apparently it's a good game. So, yeah. All right, Jacobus, keen to get your thoughts on some of those ASML, ASMI, and Tencent. 
<laughs> yeah, I think David, you probably have been a, a little bit more clear on yeah. the ASMI <laughs> story as opposed to ASML. Yeah. We might get people buying the wrong stock yeah. again, like we saw in the in the meme stock mania in, in, in 2020. Um, yeah, no, I mean clearly, you know, there, there's a clear sort of tech focus across mm. all of these. Um, I think uh, very much, you know, as people were sort of piling into Nvidia, I think the likes of ASML and ASMI, you know, more on the picks and show, shovel side, um, definitely. Definitely both, both of them solid counters. I probably would for a longer term investment, you know, take advantage of any weakness we can see. But as I mentioned, you know, I think these things were to a large extent priced for perfection. We have seen, you know, in the case of ASML, the pullback because of the, the sort of um, a, a little bit more negativity around the order book going forward. You know, if we start to see something like that with NVIDIA, that could sort of bring the whole sector down a little bit. But yeah, both of them great counters. Um, I am sort of backing away on this one. You know, I've been a, a China bull and a 10 cent specific bull for quite some time, you know. Um, so, yeah, I think it's still a great buy. I think hopefully the, the government sort of learned their lesson when they started to clamp down, you know, on the regulatory side and the tech side of you that last year. Um, yeah, and I think it's just the markets punish Chinese tech very, very much. So I think it's a great level to get in. With that said, Jacobus, which counter are you loving this afternoon? Um, so I'm, I'm going local. Um, I think, you know, the, the, the local market's probably going to be fairly muted up until we get some clarity around, you know, what's going to happen in the election. So, but I think, you know, SA Inc is trading cheap just in general. And um, so today I'm going for Sunlum. You know, I think their longer term growth prospects are still solid. Um, I like the fact that they have those, you know, notable operations in emerging markets. You know, we've been um, a little bit early on the emerging market trade, but still like it. Um, and, you know, it, obviously gives you some exposure to some of the entry-level markets where we have higher margins, etc. Um, and yeah, you know, just a, a nice sort of broad exposure across investment management, life insurance, general insurance. And we saw some nice, um, uh, a nice pullback last, last week. It's, it's up a little bit this week, but I think, uh, yeah, better entry levels for us there. Brilliant, Jacob. It's always a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much for your time this afternoon. That was your Midday Markets Update with Jacobus Brunk from the Schmidt Family Office.